Hello children, I welcome you all to the second part of our physics video which covers the important topics of your book lessons. Right? So now in your previous video I have covered points 1 to 10. Right? So on 10 topics I have given you the content in the previous video. I hope you have completed your class works. Yes? If not, finish it first. And you have to submit both the contents what I have given here as PDF in the classwork. Okay, that is what you are going to learn for your annual examinations. Clear children? Okay, now the 11th topic. Don't get confused why I am starting with 11th topic. Because in your previous video I had covered up to 10th video. Now it is 11th video. The topic is about friction. Right? In friction, Oh, where and all we use friction in our life? Where and all friction is applied in our daily life? So that is what is the first topic. Friction is used for walking, right? When we walk, right, the friction between the ground, that is the road, and our foot will make us uh, easier to walk, right? So that friction helps us to walk, right? Then automobiles, any vehicle, cycle, car, or anything. When it moves on the way road, right? When we drive it, how it is driving? We are able to drive, yes, with the petrol and the vehicle, right? Then, but, but the friction between the tires of the vehicles and the road makes the vehicles to travel, okay? Then, brakes of automobiles. How we are able to stop the brake, stop the vehicles by applying brake, right? So, how that brake system works? That when we apply force on the hand, hand brakes, so here the friction will appear between the brake shoes. In the wheel rim, you can see that no brake shoes and the wheel rim makes the vehicle to stop. So that there also there is friction helps us. Then writing, wherever we are writing, whether we write with a pen or pencil on a paper, chalk on the board, wherever we write. It, it, with the help of friction between the pen and the paper, pencil and the paper, makes us to uh, easier to write. Okay. Next one, matchstick. So when we we are able to get that fire when we strike the matchstick on the match side of the matchbox. So it is also happening due to friction, right? Then constructions. We build constructions using stone, or bricks, right? Cement and all. So, use the friction force between the cement and the stone makes them to be held together, right? So, there also friction helps us. So, wherever we see friction finds many uses in our life. So, of that very few examples I have given in it, right? So, this question can be given and asked what factor is used here? Friction. So, like that you have to answer. Okay, so then, now the, this friction has some disadvantages also. Disadvantages means what? Uh, the, what is that? Uh, some uh, negative factors what we get out of it. Right? Some difficulties what we get out of friction. Number one, friction will oppose motion. When the when surface has friction, motion won't be easier there. Right? So for example, mm. the, if the road is going to be very smooth, Right? Very clean, properly managed road wheels, it won't be, it will be very soft on the road, right? So we can travel easily. But if the road is not properly maintained, there and there it digs and dumps up there, right? So how we will walk or uh, drive on the road? See, it will be a little difficult to us, right? So always friction will oppose the motion. So it, it will cause wear and tear of the machines. Wear and tear of the machines means what the if friction is there, easily machines will get repaired. Next one, when friction is there, heat will be produced. The best example you can get the fan. Fan is if it is continuously rotating means the internal parts of the uh, fan will get more friction and out of that hot hair you will get. No. So that is what we say friction produces heat and then friction will lead to wastage of energy also. Due to friction, some energy will be wasted in every machine or every part of, for example, how what we can say, you take fan itself, right? So when the heat is more produced, uh, though even though same current is given, due to high friction, what will happen? Less air only we will get. So here, their energy is getting wasted, okay? 
Next one. How we can reduce friction? Number one, by using lubricants. What are the examples for lubricants? Oil, grease, like that we have to use. Right, next one, by using ball bearings. I have told you this already when I got this lesson. In cycles, small, uh, small, small balls we have near in the pedaling, that pedaling pad. Right? So that small balls will make us to have reduced friction between that, uh, what is that, pedaling pad and the other part of the cycle. Right? Next one, by polishing. See, uh, friction always happens uh, due to more irregularities. Roughness leads to friction. So how we have to reduce Roughness leads to friction means by polishing, by making the surface to be very smooth, friction can be reduced. Next one, very very important point, by streamlining. Streamlining means what? Um, making the object's uh, head to, to be in a very sharp way. Like a fish. Fish can you see Chana, how it swims, swims in water? Uh, see the head will be very narrow like this, no. So like that, if it is, that shape is called a streamlining. By making that shape, we can easily avoid friction. For example, I can say like this. Our vehicle, two wheelers and the cars, right? So our two wheelers, in front it is very, what is that, compared to the body of the vehicle, right? The, two, the front part of cars and two wheelers is narrow, sharpened, sharpened. Because it will overgo the friction created by the air when we drive. Okay, so that is why we make the front objects to be streamlined, narrower. Right, next one, by sprinkling soft powder. That is, have you ever, you, I hope you have played, uh, played this carrom board, right? When you are playing carrom board, to avoid that roughness, the coin won't move very easily, right? So what, what we will do, we will sprinkle some powder, carrom powder. What it will do, it will reduce this uh, irregularities around the carom board and it will make the board to be softer, right, Smooth, smoother and the coin can move very easily. So these are the factors which will reduce the friction. Right, in this how questions will be asked, how we can reduce friction? Some options will be given, the correct options you have to select and give and otherwise questions can be asked. What are the ways to reduce friction? Like that also question may come. So if a content is given under that particular topic, read all the contents over there. Right children? Now there are some formulas. Based on these formulas, I will write for sums for this. I will give sums. Okay children? Right. W is equal to F into S. What is work? Formulas, these are all the formulas for work, power and energy. Right? So formula for work is work is equal to force into displacement. In brackets I have given the units. So work is equal to force into displacement. Work unit is joule. Right? So next, potential energy is equal to mgh. Here one thing I have to tell you, W means work, F means force, small s means displacement. Work is equal to force into displacement. Okay, then we have potential energy. Potential energy is equal to mgh joule. Unit of energy is joule. M means mass. G means acceleration due to gravity. And h is height. H is height. Okay, potential energy is equal to mgh joule. Right, then kinetic energy. K, E, I have written as uh, kinetic energy I have written as K, E. That is equal to half mv square. Half mv square joule. Okay. Next. Half is the number, m is the mass, v is the velocity. Half mv square. Right. Next we have power. We have three formulas for power here. So power is equal to work done by time. Power is equal to work done by time. Here I have written in short form children. But in the PDF, I give us full form. Okay. Power is equal to W by T, which is work done by time. Power unit is what? W A T T. Right? So power is equal to V I. V P is power, V is voltage, I is current. I is current. And the power unit is what? W H T. Sorry, not W H T T, V W A T T. 
what? J is what? Right? Next one, power is equal to force into velocity. Force F V. So power is equal to just what here. Okay. So based on this formula, you know very sincerely. Based on this formula, only I am going to give sums for you. Right. Next one, we are learning in graduation lesson. We learn one sum of the third. Do you remember? Force is equal to that law's equation is. Shall I say the law? Can you take the lesson graduation third unit? I think. Right. So in that third unit, there is one topic Newton's law of gravitation. In that topic, you take F is equal to g m one m two by r square. Yes, g F is equal to g m one m two by r square. What about the so F? F is force. G is universal gravitational constant. Universal gravitational constant. What is its value? I have not written on the board, but I will give you the PDF notes and find that value in the book also. Six point six seven three into ten power minus eleven. So note that number. Okay. So F is equal to capital G M one M two by R square. This is the equation for Newton's law of gravitation. F is called as force. G is universal gravitational constant. M1 and M2 are masses, and R is the distance between the two bodies, right? Okay. Now we have to learn about some important concepts in gravitation lesson. First, we have this is also belong to this is also belong to gravitation lesson only. Okay. Now we have to learn about Kepler's law. You can you remember it? Kepler's law has been given in three statements. First law, second law, and third law. So here in this in this content, we are not going to learn the statement of the law. Statement of the law not needed now. But what does the first law says? What does the second law says? That main points you need to know. Okay. So first law says about position. Planet's position. Have you taken that law in your hand? So it shows that perigee position and apogee position. Planet one, the sun is at the center. Planets are revolving around the sun, right? So if the sun is rotating, right? The position nearer to the sun. If the position is very near to the sun, means that position is called as perigee. When it is farther away from the sun, means it is apogee position. So first law explains about perigee and apogee. So remember that. Next one, second law is called as, otherwise called as, law of equal areas. So question can come like this. Which law is called as law of equal areas? So you have to say Kepler's second law. Otherwise this question can be called as. Which law is called as law of equal areas? Kepler's second law. So like that question can be asked. Right now, third law. So third law, there is one equation. T square is proportional. T square is proportional to a q. So time period square is proportional to q of the, the length of the axis. This is the equation of Kepler's third law. So these are the important points you have to learn. So first law explains about perigee and apogee positions of a planet. Second law explains about it is otherwise called as law of equal areas, and third law says its equation is t square is proportional to a q. Okay, so now we have to learn about types of the that the Kepler's three laws are over children. Now we are moving to types of satellites. So satellites in detail we are not doing. So there are names for the types of satellites only we have to know. There are two types of satellites as we learned already. The first type is called as geostationary satellite, and the second type is called as polar satellite. What are the two types of satellites? Geostationary and polar satellites. Okay. And we have learned of the two velocities, two types of velocities. One is orbital velocity, and other one is escape velocity or escape speed. Right. So orbital velocity is the velocity a particle should have, a substance should have to move in an orbit. For example, Earth is rotating on its orbit around the sun now. 
when it is moving it will have some speed notes as well that speed is called as orbital velocity that orbital velocity is denoted by a symbol called vo v substituted by o we have to write below right so that is equal to square root of gr square root of g what is g acceleration due to gravity what is r radius of the planet okay so any planet to move in its orbit the arc for the arc velocity needed the speed needed is called as orbital velocity it is denoted by vo and its formula is square root of gr g is called as acceleration due to gravity r is called as radius of that particular planet clear children now we have escape speed escape speed is that the name itself says if a planet is moving with orbital velocity it has to move out of the orbit it has to move yet it has if it has to escape from the orbit means it should have one speed that speed of the planet is called as escape speed that is equal to that is the symbol is v substituted by e v e is equal to square root of 2 g r v e is equal to square root of 2 g r okay children next we are moving move, we are till now the gravitational lesson topics are over now we are moving to electroscope electroscope talk what is first you have to understand what is electroscope it is an instrument to test an object whether it is charged or not right so electroscope we are not in the lesson we have not board leaf electroscope and all do you remember children so that electroscope what is an electroscope it is just like a testing device it will test whether a body is charged or not okay next one what are the three methods we use to the charge with the electroscope there are three methods what are they charging by friction charging by conduction and charging by induction so what are the three methods charging by friction charging by conduction and charging by induction right next one we are moving to the next to electricity lessons uh, in that three definitions we have to learn the definitions are of charge voltage and current so what is charge it is the basic strength of a particle in an atom first you have to remember what is an atom see if we break a substance into smaller smaller units the last part which we cannot see through our eyes are called is called as atom in that the three particles are there i told you that what are the three particles protons electrons and neutrons these protons electrons and neutrons will have some basic strength that strength is called as charge okay so that strength is denoted by the symbol q small q or sometimes it is represented by capital q that unit is coulomb c capital c spelling i have written here c o u l o m b coulomb right so what is charge it is the basic strength of a particle in an atom there are three particles in an atom what are they proton will have positive charge electron will have negative charge and neutron will have neutral charge right so now the symbol is q and its unit is coulomb coulomb's symbol is capital c okay next we have to learn about voltage say the word voltage spelling v o l t a g e its symbol is capital v right it is otherwise called as potential difference what is it potential difference p o t e n t i a l potential difference which is a, what is otherwise called as potential difference voltage what is its formula voltage symbol is v v is equal to i r what is i here current what is r resistance what is r resistance so what is the formula for potential difference v is equal to i r v is voltage or potential difference 
I is the current and R is the resistance. So what is the unit of voltage? Unit of voltage we call it as volts. V O L T S volts. V O L T S volts. The symbol is capital V. Here you should not get confused. V stands for both voltage and volts. Okay, children. So when we write end, that end means uh, this. If we are writing here, this V in the beginning. So it is voltage. If we write after a number, then it is unit volts. So like that only you have to differentiate. Okay, children. So now we are moving to the third term, which is called as current, electric current. What is its symbol? Capital I. Electric current symbol is capital I. Right. Next, what is current? It is the rate of flow of charge. Charge we have learned here, now, children. Q. So both the small Q we will use and capital Q also we will use. Right. So that's why I have written the formula. What is the symbol for current? I. So charge rate of flow of charge means what? Rate means already I have told you. Rate means charge by time. Anything in physics when we divide anything by time, that is called as rate. Okay. Here rate of flow of charge no. So charge divided by time. Charge divided by time is called as current. So I is equal to Q by T. Current is equal to charge by time. Okay, what is this unit? Unit is ampere. So when you are writing ampere in full form, start with small letters. A M P E R E. What is its full symbol? Capital A. Okay, children. So, so charge, voltage, current. Okay. Now we are moving to the last lesson, which is magnetism. This lesson is not taught in your class, and even in your video class, we have not covered it. So I will go in little detail, right? So magnets, you know, children, right? Magnets around it there will be some magnetic power, you know, children. When you bring two magnets to cling on each other, it will attract, get attached, right? So when around this magnet, one magnetic force will be there, right? This magnetic force contains some magnetic lines of force. Right? So that magnetic lines of force will have some properties, will have some character. What are they? Number one. So if are you having a textbook in your hand? Change to the turn to the pages of magnetism and take this topic. Properties of magnetic lines of force. Take this topic. Properties of magnetic lines of force. What in that we have so many properties in that book. I have selected only few points in that. Okay. So what first one, these magnetic lines are close continuous curves. So when a magnet is there, they will be surrounded by, it will be surrounded by magnetic lines of force. How these magnetic lines of force it will be? It won't be straight, it will be curved, and it will be continuous. They will nowhere it will end. Continuously it will go. Right, so that's why, the, like that, uh, that's only way to say like this magnetic lines of force are closed and continuous curves. Okay, second point says North Pole, what, magnet, every magnet will have two poles. One end is called as North Pole and another end is called as South Pole. Okay, this line, lines of force will go in two directions, both the directions. Okay, these lines of forces will never cross. North pole will give to one set of magnetic lines of force. South pole will give rise to one set of magnetic lines of force. They will never match with each other. They will never intersect. Okay, next one. Magnetic lines of force will start from North pole and end with South pole. So magnetic lines of force will start with from North pole and end at South pole. And near the poles, poles means end, either the North pole or the South pole, there only the magnetic force, magnetic power will be very high. And in the center, it will be less than the poles. Okay, so very very important points. Next one, atomic structure. How an atom will be? 
and uh, what are the important points in an atom? I told you what is an atom. What is an atom? When you break any object, the ultimate last small part is called as atom, which we cannot see through our eyes. That atom's small structure, some rough structure I have drawn it. That atom will contain a central part. That central part is called as nucleus. And this nucleus spelling N-U-C-L-E-U-S. And this nucleus is surrounded by circular structures and they are called as orbits. Say the word O-R-B-I-T-S. Okay. So central part is called as nucleus and the surrounding parts are called as orbits. Here when I was explaining here the atom, I told you there are three subatomic particles. What are they? Proton, electron and neutron. In this, proton and neutrons are good friends. They will be inside the nucleus. Where what end of which two particles will be there inside the nucleus? Proton and neutron. And this, what about the electrons? They, they will be rounding, revolving around the nucleus on the orbits. Okay children, so atom will contain a central part called the nucleus, surrounded by circular orbits, circular structures called orbits. And what will be there inside the nucleus? Proton and neutron and electron will be revolving around the nucleus. Right, that is what I written here in short form. Proton plus neutron are inside the nucleus, electrons will revolve around the orbits. Now, charges this one already I told you. Protons will have positive charge, electrons will have negative charge and neutrons will have neutral charge. Neutral charge means what is it? It is neither positive and nor negative. It will, have, it will have zero charge. Instead of zero, we can say it is neutral. Right? So, that is see here children. In an atom, how much ever proton is there inside the nucleus? I said neutron is neutral, so it won't have any charge. So, proton will have positive charge. If there are 10 protons inside the nucleus, in an atom by nature, if there are 10 protons, electrons also will be 10. So, proton charge is positive. So, 10 proton means plus 10 you will have. And the electrons also will be 10. But it will be minus 10. Plus 10 and minus 10. So, it will 10 minus 10, it will be equal to 0. So, atom its whole charge will be zero. It will have subatomic particles. Number of protons will be equal to number of electrons. I repeat this point. In an atom, number of protons is equal to number of electrons. So, charge will be neutral. Okay, children. Next. We have, so all these points are very, very important, children. So remember this, it will come even till your 12th standard. Okay, right now in magnetism lesson, we have an important law called as Coulomb's law. Right, what does that mean? It is similar to this Newton's universal law of gravitation. Right, so similar to that. Right, here in gravitation lesson, we call it to be Newton's law of gravitation. Here we call it to be Coulomb's law. Same here. Yes, yes. Instead of G, we have K here. Instead of M1, we say M1 and M2. But here M1 and M2 refers to mass. But here M1 and M2 refers to pole strength of the magnets. Here we have two magnets, right? The force between two magnets will be calculated here. That force is proportional to product of the pole strength. M1 and M2 is refers to pole. Pole strength. The value of how much magnetic force each pole has. Right? So, pole strength divided by distance. R is the distance here. R square. So, that proportionality is taken out and one constant is introduced. So, this equation we you need not to worry children. So, know this equation alone. F is equal to K M1 M2 by R square. Coulomb's law equation is F is equal to K M1 M2 by R square. 
Okay, so question can be asked like this: What is Coulomb's law equation? What is Coulomb's law equation? F is equal to k m1 m2 by r square. Clear, children? Right. Next, we have magnets. We have two types. One is permanent magnet, and other one is electromagnet. What is permanent magnet and electromagnet? You can take page number one ten twenty seven in your book, and we have a tabular problem there. So that you can copy in your class book. I will give PDF children. So far, no need to copy from the book, right? So that point only I have covered here. What are the two types of magnets? Permanent magnets and electromagnets. What are their differences? Permanent magnets will have strong properties and permanent properties. Whatever properties a magnet have, it will be permanent, right? But for electromagnets, the properties are temporary. For quite a small time only, it will have, right? Next one, a permanent magnet will have fixed poles. Fixed poles means what? If a pole, if a magnet have a north pole, it will always be north pole. And if it is south pole, means it is always a south pole. Like that, the poles are fixed, right? But in the case of electromagnets, it is not fixed. It will move. It gets on change. Okay. Next, usually permanent magnets will be made out of steel. Steel is one metal-like substance, metal substance. So permanent magnets are usually made of steel. But here, electromagnets will be made up of a material called soft iron. Material called called soft iron. Okay. This one here, the pole strength, uh, that magnet will have some strength, no, near the poles. That is called as pole strength. That pole strength will be very fixed. Uh, even not only on the poles, the complete strength of the magnet will be fixed if it is a permanent magnet. But if you keep on changing, if it is going to be an electromagnet. So these properties you have to understand. So from this, which magnet is made up of soft iron? What will be your answer? Electromagnet. So like this, uh, your differences tab column need to be learned too. Okay. So we have covered both uh, ultimately twenty concepts. So all these twenty concepts you need to be get cut up. Now write it in the classroom. Don't get confused how these questions will be asked. Okay. Under a topic, I have given certain topics, certain contents. So you like write the topic and learn all the points what I have given under each topic. From that only questions will be asked. No detailed questions will be asked this time. Only one mark questions and short answers. So these questions, if you prepare, you can answer for both the one mark questions and two mark questions. That's why I have given the content like this. Along with this, based on this formula, mainly of this W is equal to F into S, and these two the three formulas, I will give only four sums, right? W is equal to F into S, P is equal to W by T, P is equal to V I, P is equal to F B. Based on these formulas, I will give one one sums. Copy that. Do what it is a direct sum only, which I have taught you in the video also, previous lessons also. Right, children. So write the password. Learn the lessons well. Get good marks in your examination. All the best, children.